Hello, I'm Stuart Bloor. Just sat down in my tackle room to record this. And who comes in? Twinkle, my Bedlington Terrier, jumps up on my lap. Do you know what my biggest problem is as an angler? What to leave out? I've got so many species and venues and methods and tactics going through my mind each week. The biggest problem I have is what do I target? What do I go for? Anyway, I haven't been tench fishing for a long time since the spring. So I decided as summer is on its way out fast to do a week after tench. I've done a session already. It was a nice night when I arrived. I've fished there before. I have caught tench and good ones into the bargain. The nature there is pretty good. In fact, I saw a barn owl as I left. I didn't do the, the night. I left during darkness, saw a barn owl as I left. It was sitting there on a, on a post, got my camcorder, or about to get my camcorder, because it was in the headlights of my car. Unfortunately, I missed it. But it was a great sunset, and as you can see as well, I also caught a tench, only the one. And you know what, sometimes it's a very thin line between success and failure. Although, I would put success and failure in inverted commas, because if you're an angler and you're really into your fishing, there's no such thing as failure, is there? I've arrived at a lake, I'm doing an overnighter. One thing that I really don't like, not just in fishing, but in, in every aspect of life, is waste. Certainly with food at home, I'm always saying to my wife, she says, what do you want to eat? And I always say, is there anything that needs eating up before the sell-by date expires? And certainly as far as fishing is concerned, I'm the same. I've got a bait dip there, and there was just a little bit in the bottom, no use to, to anyone really. Rather than waste it, I've added some water, as you can see, giving it a good swill round, and I'll add that to the ground bait. I'm fishing with Flumino ground bait. I've got some seeds in there. I'll be adding some broken boilies. I'm fishing with M2, that's the dip, by the way, and I'll be fishing a couple of pop-ups, small pop-ups, on the hook. I'm only going to be about three or four lengths out tonight, so I'll be able to put the ground bait out by hand and actually cast out underarm. Nothing at all during the night. And I'm just packing away. In fact, I've put my pod down and I always, always leave my rods till last. And what happens? One of them starts to go. Brilliant. I have to keep an eye on them, of course, because you haven't got the bite alarm to warn you that there's some action. Anyway, I'll say I had no action in the night. I had, uh, I had loads of rats. I had Dorbenton's bats giving me liners and little false indications. I even had a barn owl fly over me at first light. That was brilliant. No more than two metres away. Anyway, this fish is coming in now and I'm going to drop down and net it. I've mentioned seeds and in particular I'm referring to pigeon conditioner. It's a great bait and a price range is an idea of what you can expect to pay for a 20 kilogram sack from about 12 pounds at the lower end of the market up to somewhere 18, 19, 20, that type of price. Now the seeds do vary and it's important to make sure that they are prepared properly. That's the key to all types of fishing. I use them for tench, for barbel and for carp but preparation the process to make sure those seeds are safe is absolutely important now very often the seeds that I end up getting hold of all I need to do is to tip boiling hot water on them leave them to soak overnight and the next morning I'm able to look at the seeds they've now taken on that water that I put in there and by the way may need topping up as well during the course of the soaking but it's taken on the water they've now swollen to maximum size and that's important because think tiger nuts if they're not prepared properly once the fish takes them on board into its stomach it can cause all sorts of issues some of them quite serious of course so you get the seeds you prepare them properly. If there's any doubt at all, or there may even be some nut 
type things in there, uh, make sure you boil them. The important thing is to make sure they're well prepared, prepared safely. But of course, once you've uh, done that, you can then uh, wash the seeds down, although they do produce a lovely uh, aniseed syrup that you may want to incorporate into the bait when you put it out. But you can wash them down and flavour them with your own additive, your own dip, your own glug that you want to put in there. And as for putting them out, well, it depends where you fish in, uh, how far out you fish in, and all that sort of thing. You can put them out by hand, although that is a bit tricky because they will fall at various levels out to where you want them. I usually use ground bait as a, as a carrier and a little bit of a, an extra additive as well, an attraction for the fish. You can spod them, you can put them in a, a feeder, a cage feeder, an open-ended feeder with a little bit of uh, ground bait at each end to hold them in place. Sky's the limit really, but above all they are great baits, but they need to be prepared properly. I can't emphasize that enough. I'm doing another overnighter. Actually, I've already done one that hasn't featured on the video. I didn't catch anything. I arrived quite late. By the time I finally got everything set up, it was dark. The nights are drawing in now, aren't they, as we move through the summer. I was fishing popped up corn on both rods and I was also putting some corn out as well in with the seed and the ground bait. On this particular occasion right now I'm still keeping faith in corn on one of the rods but I've gone back to popped up uh, two M2 boilies on the other. That's served me well so far and as always confidence plays a big part in fishing doesn't it? It's going to be a nice night tonight. I'm stretched out under the stars on my bed chair. Lying there just, I could hear a reed warbler in the rushes next to me. Anyway, as I often do, I try and uh, see them because they're usually heard but not seen. And I managed to, to track it down. Anyway, as I, as I looked and, and watched its activity, I saw that there was actually a nest there. Now, usually these nests are very well concealed, but this one was built into the stem of a water dock and it was very, very open. So I was able to film it without actually going into the environment of the bird. Now, of course, it's illegal to do that, although it's common sense not to of course but as you can see the footage is a little bit shaky because I am at a little bit of a distance from the nest and I was having to hold it without the camcorder without the support of a tripod but it was great to see it's another one of these been here all night had nothing and now in bright sunshine I'm thinking of packing away I've got a fish on <laughs> Doesn't matter, does it? As long as they come, that's the important thing. I don't think it's big. Oh no! I just had a whole pull. <laughs> I saw it as well. <laughs> oh. That was on corn. Anyway, you can tell it was a tench. Look at the slime there. <laughs> that's on the hook length. Good morning, I've done my fifth night and I'm into a fish. Oh, nothing at all during the night, but I've got one on now. As you can see, it's not even light yet. And let's hope this one doesn't result in a hook pull. I think it's gone over the line of the other one actually. Never mind, as long as I can get it in, I can do all the untangling later. After a couple of blanks, I'm certainly happy to get this one on the bank. Not a monster, but very welcome as far as I'm concerned. That fish was the smallest of the ones I've had so far this week. So although I haven't had quantity, I've had quality, and that certainly suits me. But it hasn't been fishing well at all. It's been it's been slow to say the least. Certainly from the cars that have been on the car park, or not, as the case may be, that's told me that it's been a bit of a struggle at the moment. Because normally when I arrive, the place is 
pretty full with carpers but on three occasions there hasn't even been a single car and on the other two there's been just one other vehicle so word gets around doesn't it and people say that it's struggling at the moment it's not fishing well or whatever they stay away they go somewhere else I think it's important for us as anglers as it is in life in general to recognize that there's a fine line between sticking at something because we know it'll come good in the end and being stubborn and we certainly don't want to be the latter do we we don't want to be the sort of anglers or the sort of people in life that just do something because we're absolutely stubborn about it we want to do it because we realize or we believe there's a chance that it will come good in the end and that's why i've stuck at this this week and it's certainly worked hasn't it and it's always a, it's always good to have a challenge it's always good to be motivated by difficult fishing conditions because when you do catch it certainly makes it worthwhile.